And welcome back into Open Line. We really appreciate you tuning in this evening. A lot of legal questions for our expert, Kevin Kennedy from the Kennedy Law Firm. Kevin always gets these phones completely lit up because I know a lot of you have those legal questions and you want to ask somebody those questions that you trust, that you know has experience. And that's exactly what Kevin does. So Kevin, we're always glad when you're here and so are the viewers. We're going right back to the lines right now. I think Sissy is on the line with us. Sissy, we're glad that you're joining us. Do you have a question for Kevin? Yes, I do. If you're in a lawsuit and uh, you win and everything, is your attorney supposed to uh, give you a breakdown before, you know, all your liens, what you take, what he takes out on you and all that, before you sign uh, to get your check? Yes, ma'am. I would say what would be realistically fair is transparency. If we had a million dollar lawsuit, I think, well, it would certainly be the custom in the legal profession to have everything broken down. Of course, you know, lawyers are in a fiduciary responsibility, but you have a right to know the status of your case. You have the right to know if they charged me $400,000 for a Vanderbilt bill for an, on a million dollar case, if they have cut that down and they've agreed to take a hundred thousand, you have a right to know all of this. And so a good understanding keeps down a misunderstanding. And yes, if they said, I would like to see it all and I'd like to have it in writing so that we don't have a misunderstanding later. And they said, well, I got a million dollars. They only had a million dollars worth of insurance. That's fine. So tell me what we paid. Tell me what was negotiated. Tell me if the, all the liens have been released and do I get this amount of money and am I free and clear? Those are all good questions and they should be answered very clearly for you. And if they say, well, I don't know how much you're gonna get, I don't know this, I'd say, well, let's find out how much we're gonna get because you'll probably be very disappointed if we don't have that understanding. I know we would certainly always do that. And Kevin, that's just one more reason. When people sometimes say, you know, do I need a lawyer? Do I not need a lawyer? Well, you're just Come on, a, Chuck. a great example. I mean, the law is you're complicated. You're begging for trouble. It, yes. And like I said, you can pay now or you can pay later. I have people all the time come in and say, well, you know, I was hurting the wreck, Kevin, but I thought they would just pay this and we're down to the wire and the insurance companies are abusing them. It's really horrid. And then, you know, I've told you before, well, I talked to the adjuster and he said he was gonna pay all this and we would settle. And so then we talk about it and we get past the one year statute of limitations. Hello, come in, Chuck. Do you think the insurance company's gonna pay after one year and you didn't file? It's called statute limitations defense, and I'm sorry you waited too long. And you can raise Cain, you can say whatever, call your grandmother, call your mom and your cousin, the statute ran and you didn't file. So it's tough enough, don't make any mistakes. Put that team together. The smartest people have lawyers. I've got the experience. If it was me and my family, we're going to have a lawyer. Absolutely. So, Sissy, we appreciate you calling in this evening with your question. So we will go back to the lines right now. By the way, if you are just tuning in, we have about a half hour left. If you have that legal question, make sure you call that number you see on your screen. It's 737-7587. Let's go right back to the lines right now. Linda is with us. Linda, we're glad that you're joining us here on Open Line. Do you have a question for Kevin? Yes, I do. Uh, I have a power of attorney, and I'd like to change... Do I have to let them know in writing that I'm not wanting them as my power of attorney anymore? That's what I would do. And uh, I would go to a lawyer and let them prepare that revocation of that power of attorney. Because you have the right, you could give a power of attorney to your son, you could give one to your daughter, you could give one to your brother. There could be three, and they all have the ability to conduct business for you. But if you only want one, you're gonna have to revoke those each time because just because you issue one to someone doesn't revoke it how's the world even going to know thank you for the question all right we do appreciate that linda all right let's go back to the lines right now we're glad that avery is watching this evening avery you're on open line do you have a question or a comment for kevin can you hear us avery all right one more time avery just checking if you can hear us all right, we'll try. Avery, if you can't, call us back. We're going to go to the lines right now. Ray is on the line with us. Ray, how are you this evening? Do you have a question for Kevin? Yes, I do. All right, go ahead. Hey, Ray. Uh, I am one of four descendants for my property 
my mother and my father, there is no will that uh, designates me as a spokesperson for the okay. property that I live on. And I live on that property for the purpose of keeping the land in my family's name. I have okay. a son. I have four grandchildren. How can I better protect myself as far as my descendants go? And there is no written guarantee that I have any uh, uh, authority. How do I go about that? And uh, I, oh, I am the right, oldest right. son, uh, but I also have other family members. I have grandchildren. Okay. How do I go about leaving my descendants what I possess today? All right, right. Here's the real world. When that family did not have a will, somebody has to go to the court and file to be an administrator over the estate. And once you file, and you have the right to do that, is to go to the courthouse. You can say, I'm going to be the administrator over this property, which encompasses all the estate, would have included their cars, their furniture, their land, whatever, and go through the court. That's the only way that a deed can be issued, and that deed would come out in the descendants, you and the other three. Now, then you'd have a right, if they wanted to give you their interest, they could do quick claim deeds, but you can't get a clear title on that until it comes through the court, because there could be liens from other people. There could be liens from the government, and we hope that there's not. And, but every person who's in the family has the same rights. So it's four, it would go through persterpes, meaning each one of you are in equal shares, but you couldn't sell it. So you need to get that settled so you could get it in your name that you could then write a will and leave it to your children or your grandchildren. You gotta get possessed. So there's some steps there to take. Good luck to you, Ray. All right. Thank you for calling in, Ray, and uh, good to know, Kevin. Uh, we do have Avery on the line with us, it looks like now. So, Avery, we're glad that you are on open line. Do you have a question or a comment for Kevin? A question? Okay, go ahead. Avery, if you're having a hard time, you may want to step away a little from your uh, television or turn that television down. Sometimes it gives a little feedback. So, uh, if you do that, I think you'll have a better luck uh, audio wise. Can you hear us, Avery? Yeah. What I really want to know is why would I need to go for foreclosure? Yeah. What I really want to know is why would I go for a foreclosure fraud case? Okay, a foreclosure fraud case. Well, if you had the property and it was foreclosed on, but it was done fraudulently, then whoever the parties are, you would go to the lawyer and you could file on the people who foreclosed. It, and if, quite frankly, if you can prove the fraud, that is a criminal offense, and you can go to the district attorney's office and they can prosecute those people for fraud. So I would find out who was responsible, and then I would go to the district attorney and say, this is clearly defrauded. And if it's individuals, it may be multiple. Uh, so you have the right to do that. And let me say this to all those who are buying property and they're selling property on contracts and they said, we're going to foreclose and I'm gonna do it on my own. You know what I hear a lot? I'm very sophisticated in the law and I don't need a lawyer, I can do this on my own. Well, guess what? And that's why we have these fraudulent lawsuits for a foreclosure that went bad. Puts a cloud on the title. So always have a title opinion done. I recommend getting insurance because there's all kinds of little loopholes no one knew about until later. And you can buy it, but then you can't sell it. So th th that's, a, that's the problem. I think I gave you the best advice to go pursue. Thank you so much. All Andrew. right, great advice there. Hope that helps, Avery. We are going back to the lines right now. So William is on the line with us. William, good evening. Do you have a question for Kevin? Yes, I do. All right, go ahead. Okay. okay. Um, my grandmother, uh, she set a trust fund out for us back in 1995. 
And upon her death, it uh, it was supposed to start as a 25-year 20, plan and pay off in 2002. She died in 1997. Well, before she established the trust, my sister was was carrying her back and forth to her place in Florida, and my grandmother would give her like eighty thousand dollars to start a trucking business. Well, my aunt threw a big stink over it, and uh, somehow got it into court, and my sister had agreed to pay like five hundred dollars, like a month on it. Okay, well. She filed bankruptcy. Now my uh, aunt is telling me that uh, we don't get anything. And uh, I've got all the copies to the uh, trust fund. And uh, it said in 2001, there was $395,000 in it. And the uh, paper said that it should have been squared away in uh, like 2002. And we should have been receiving royalties from it, my mother and and, and her children. And I'm yet to receive anything. Um, I don't know how to okay. go about about trying to collect Here's that. Here's what yeah, you need to disability do. And uh, it's about to happen like this next year. I don't know what to do. Okay, William. Here's what you're going to need to do. You need to get your hands on the trust document. Who was named as trustee? That's the person who's responsible for paying that out. It may very well have been someone has turned around and stolen the money, diverted the money, and the money is not there, or they may be telling you something that is not true. So you have the ability to hire a lawyer, and sometimes only a letter from a lawyer could be sent to them and say, we ask for a full accounting. When you're in the fiduciary responsibility, you have that requirement to provide a full account. And if they don't, you have a right to bring a lawsuit. And if they have breached that fiduciary responsibility, they can become personally liable. And if they breached it and stole the money, that is a crime against the state of Tennessee, go to the district attorney and they can go to the grand jury and indict that person. As a part of the settlement, they have to pay that restitution back. So there's a multitude of issues there, but you do need to have the understanding. Start, get that document, and then take that to a lawyer who does estate work. All Best right, great plan, Kevin. Thanks Great. so much. William, we appreciate your call. Uh, we do have a lot of you on the line, but we do need to take a short break. If you do have that legal question, make sure you get on the line with us as quickly as possible. We've got about 15 minutes left. 737-7587 is the number, and you're watching Open Line. This is a Storm 5.